Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out some tech tips on Sonic Academy. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can use mid-side equalization in the mix. So before we get into it, a little, little background on mid-side equalization. It's basically an equalizing or equalizer technique that allows you to separate the middle frequencies from the left and right or the side frequencies so you can treat them independently from each other. Now there's tons of applications where that's useful, but most often you find mid-side EQ talked about when you're discussing mastering. You'll take with a stereo track, you'll use mid-side EQ, so if you're trying to get a little bit of the bass out, or maybe there's not enough bass or there's too much high end or whatever, you can just do it to either the side or the middle. Well, it's actually kind of cool to use it in the mix, and I'm going to show you how you can do it to create some separation between your lead synth sounds and your bass sounds. So. I have been working through this little demo or this little project in a couple other tech tip videos, but if you haven't seen those, I'm going to play this little drop section for you. All right, so it's, it's, um, Part, part of it's unmixed at this point just so I could do this tech tip. And the pink tracks right here are the lead synth sounds. There's this one which is kind of ambient. And then there's the main drop sound which is this weird looking track if you guys don't use track stacks in Logic. It's basically a combination of five different synth sounds. Some of which are coming from Massive. And then the others are coming from, from silence. So what you can do if you don't know what a track stack is, you can like highlight all these tracks if they weren't already in a track stack. You can highlight them on the actual tracks themselves, right click and then say create track stack. And you get this nice little drop down. So I like doing that for a few reasons. First, it makes my brain, my ADD brain think, hey, that's one instrument. Otherwise I'll spend hours treating each track separately and I don't wanna do that. And also it just helps keep the uh, mix, the, the actual range window or your main window in Logic a little bit more cle cleanly and organized. So I've done the same thing with the bass. I have a drop here. It's three sounds. There's a sub bass, kind of a gritty bass, and then the top bass. Right. So right now as it stands, this, the mix, the drop sounds all right. There needs to be some more separation though between the lead sounds and the bass sounds, and this is where you can use mid-side equalization. So this technique won't always work depending on the genre, but you can just reverse it and it will usually work. So in this specific drop, the lead sounds are more important than the bass sounds. The bass sounds are important, but there's no vocal right here, so this lead synth is very important in the context of the mix. If you take that out, it's gonna sound like there's a huge hole in the mix. Right, so what we need to do is we need to create some separation to where the lead synth is living in its own space, its own world, independent from the bass. Now, with the amount of sounds that I have stacked together to make the lead sat the, the the lead synth, I have not done any equalization or EQ cuts. So I know there's going to be some low end frequency in there that's going to be conflicting with my bass sound. Now, there's three bass sounds making up the whole part that you hear of the bass. This, this sub bass right here, it's not going to be a problem, but these two basses have some high frequencies in them. Especially this last one. And that's going to be kind of living in the same frequency range as my lead synth. So you can use mid-side EQ in a creative way outside of the typical mastering you know, process that most people use it on to kind of create this separation. Let's look at it. So I'm going to load up a channel equalizer in Logic on my track stack for all my synths. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do recall default. And I'm going to turn the analyzer on and we're going to see what frequencies are being represented by this lead. All right, so there's a boatload of energy from 150 down to 20. And that's not necessarily a good thing because in this drop, in this instance, the, uh, s these lead sounds aren't going to be panned hard left and right. They need to be center because it's the big focus of the mix, right? It's the drop. So there's a lot of other things living in the center of the track right now. There's the kick, 
there are those three bases and those kicks the kick and three bases their frequencies are should be more important at the low frequencies than these lead sounds so i need to take those out it'll make the mix cleaner and clearer but if i do that on a stereo track and i take too many of those frequencies out it kind of makes it sound tinty right i don't want that so what i can do is I can change the processing mode from stereo, left only, right only, mid only, to side only. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose mid only. Now listen to the difference. So I rolled off too much. I only wanna go to about 250. But the difference between the mid and stereo Stereo is going to affect the whole stereo image. This mid is only going to carve out those frequencies out of the center or the middle of my stereo field of these sounds. So that's important because I'm trying to clear up space for the basses right now by taking out frequencies. Now you might be asking, why don't I just boost frequencies? It's, always, it's typically better to cut frequencies when you can so you don't get uh, phase and all that sort of stuff that can come or aliasing. There's a lot of stuff that can come with boosting too many frequencies, but cutting them is, isn't usually as much as a problem. So I'm cutting out the low frequencies from the middle of the stereo frequency of my drop stack, which is five different synths coming from massive and silent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the inverse of this with my bass sound. So I'm going to let's load up the default here. What we're going to do is we're going to change this to, instead of stereo, we're going to change it to side only. Because I want to take out the high frequencies from my bass right now on the side, which is left and right. Because that's where my lead sounds that are very stereo-centric sounding, they're all just stereo uh, instrument tracks coming from either massive or silent. I want to take out the high frequencies. So now the bass is going to have less high frequencies on the side, the left and right channels. So what I'm going to do is roll that off to about 1K and see what we got. So there it is, off, on. So it's just kind of focusing those high frequencies more into the middle of the track, and it's going to leave the side that the, there's going to, it's going to leave a space in the side of the mix for those frequencies from 1K up to really let the lead synths breathe. So if I play these together. You can hear that there's more separation between the sounds. So here is the lead synth with the EQ on. We've taken out just the middle, the mid frequencies or the middle part of the, the stereo spectrum. We've taken out these frequencies from about 200 and, I don't know, 300 ish down. But we're keeping the, the, the rest of the stereo image intact. And we did the inverse of this with the bass. So what this does is it creates a nice layer of separation between the sounds. So I need to do just a little bit of EQ cuts on this last sound. So let's play the whole drop together now. All right, guys, so that sums up this tech tip where we were looking at how you can use mid-side equalization in the mix to create some separation between your lead and bass sounds. So we just used it in a very specialized method where we said, okay, our lead sound is a stereo stack of software instruments. Let's take out the bass frequencies just out of the middle so we don't completely kill the girth and bigness of it. And we did the inverse of that with these bass tracks down here. We took out the higher frequencies out of the side or the left and right channels of the stereo field, which left more room for those synths to breathe. Again, I'm Echo Sowers, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.